Professor Fujimoto, thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Could you tell us a little bit about the Pierre Biontorp Jean Vague Award, which you just received yesterday? Uh, this is an award that is in honor of two pioneers in the field of the relationship of central adiposity to cardiometabolic diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, stroke. Um, these two in investigators began, John Vogg began his work in the 1950s, Pierre Bjorntorp in the 1960s, and my knowledge of their work was instrumental in our development of the type of research that we did in Japanese Americans, looking at the role of central obesity, body fat distribution, to the development of type 2 diabetes and cardiometabolic diseases in that population. Professor, could you tell us a little more detail about the studies that you've done among Japanese American population? I was asked by an investigator in Japan about what the difference in diabetes rates might be in Japanese Americans as compared to Caucasians because they knew that the rates for di diabetes in Japanese were much lower than in Caucasian populations. I was aware at that time of only one report from Hawaii in which the rates for diabetes in Japanese living in Hawaii were much higher than in Caucasians in Hawaii. Uh, this led to our initial small study looking at Japanese men and Japanese American men uh, comparing them in terms of their body weight, uh, glucose levels, insulin levels, and found out that at comparable glucose levels, the Japanese American men were much more insulin resistant. They had much higher insulin levels. They were also a bit heavier, but when we adjusted for the difference in body weight, we discovered that this did not totally account for the difference in insulin resistance. And this led to our going on into looking at the work by previous investigators into body fat distribution, and we began to incorporate that into our study. And more specifically, we became aware of the work on uh, looking at body fat distribution using computed tomography and incorporated that into our study. And that turned out to be a, a, a major point in the advancement of knowledge because we found that in Japanese Americans who were not very overweight, they could still have much increased levels of visceral fat, that's fat in the abdomen, and that this was clearly related to the development of insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease, as well as hypertension. That's very interesting. What are some of the implications for general practitioners who may be treating this population? One of the things that I noticed when I was working with um, individuals was that if you just looked at them, they did not look like they had central obesity. When, when I say that, it's the, you know, the round, apple-shaped type of body habitus. They looked perfectly normal. Um, their waist circumferences weren't very big, uh, yet the same individuals when examined by CT scan had increased amounts of visceral fat. So, I'm not advocating that everyone should get CT scans, but there are some other factors that are clearly linked to this type of uh, body fat distribution, such as tending to have higher blood pressures, lower HDL levels, HDL uh, cholesterol levels, higher triglyceride levels, uh, maybe a little bit higher glucose levels. So there are some markers for this type of, of body habitus that can be easily obtained by most physicians in practice. So what would you say the real takeaway message from your research would be for the average clinician? I think that if any uh, clinician who has an Asian population um, in his practice uh, needs to be aware that even if his patient or his or her patient does not look obese by the usual standards, then in fact this is a population that is at great risk for this, um, for this cardiometabolic syndrome.